So today I've got this Panasonic Plasma I wanted to talk about. And uh, let me get a little bit closer here. As you can see, the uh, power indicator on this one is blinking 10 times. And it is blinking 10 times before I even press the power button. Uh, just upon plugging the set in, I get this 10 blinks. So I want to talk about uh, addressing this particular repair on this one. Um, also this repair could address uh, a two blink code after the power button is pressed. So we'll look at that as well. This particular model that I'm working on today does happen to be uh, the THC50FD18. So I've got the back off of the set and I'm going to plug it in. I want you to listen very closely here. I'm going to move the camera up a little bit closer to it here so you can get a little bit better sound. Uh, particularly pay attention to the first two clicks and then ver very shortly after the third click. So we get three quick clicks in succession which means uh, the 15 volts is not there and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool the FET oscillator, FET driver that supplies uh, the pulses to the two uh, FET transistors, the FET transistors that run uh, the transformer that produces the 15 volt standby. So I'm going to try to zoom in on that right here. I've got a can of, uh, let me zoom back out, I've got a can of air here and I'm just going to turn it upside down so the refrigerant comes out of it. And I'm going to shoot this little IC right here just with a little bit of uh, refrigerant to cool it. I'm going to wait a few seconds. It takes time for it to penetrate the epoxy case so if you spray it immediately and try it it won't work. But we'll give it uh, one more blast to make sure it's nice and cool. Hit the power switch. Now I get two clicks and it pauses just like it should. Shortly after I should get a third click. There's the third click. That means it successfully passed its test. We're going to try to power it up now. Two clicks. Everything's fine. Let me zoom out. As you can see the fans are running at this point. So the set's up, up and running. I'll take you around to the front of it here. And it's in the setup mode now. And uh, as you can see down here, the power LED is on solid. So we know that that's our problem with this set. Now uh, potentially you could have this problem. Uh, let me set the camera back down. There's actually two of these uh, IC chips. Let me get them both in the picture at the same time here. There's this one, which supplies the 15 volts uh, to the A board, and then there's this one, which supplies the V sustain voltage, VSUS, to the SC and the SS boards in this model. And because it's a Panasonic, they call them the SC and the SS. Everybody else calls them uh, the Y sustain and either the X or the Z sustain, depending on who makes it, whether it's an LG or a Samsung. So anyhow, we're going to address uh, repairing these little circuit boards. Um, instead of having to replace this whole power supply. Uh, this power supply, if you can see right here, it is a 704. This particular one, if I can get the camera to zoom in up here and you can actually read it. Uh, ETX2MM704 MG and then this one is an H. I don't know if you can see the H right there or not. Um, there are several different versions of this particular 704 power supply. They're all roughly the same. The only main difference is the aluminum heat sink back here is different. Uh, interchangeability on the power supply board is exactly the same. All the plugs are in the same places. They serve the same functions. So um, we'll get to um, repairing this one and go from there.
All right, so I've got the power supply out of the TV, and we're going to start on this one by turning it over and removing 25 of these screws. Each one of these is a screw holding a heat sink to the large aluminum plate. So we're going to start by removing all of the screws on the bottom of the circuit board. Okay, so I've got all the screws out of the bottom of the board. Now the next thing is to remove one, two, three, four screws from the top of the board, two in the middle of the circuit board. Okay, and I've got all those screws out of the board, and the next thing is uh, releasing all the little plastic tabs that hold the circuit board to the heat sink. After we released one at a time while lifting up and exerting pressure on the circuit board, and if you let go, sometimes the tabs will reseat themselves and lock back in place. All right, heat sink can be moved out of the way. It's got these two plastic insulators on the bottom of the circuit board. Just remember where they go. They just slide back into place like this. So we'll just pull those out, set them aside. And what we're going to be doing next is unsoldering uh, the two MC201 and MC301 IC packs. Uh, to gain access to change the actual ICs on the circuit boards themselves. Okay, so I've got the board out and I've got it clamped in the bite in the vise. I'm going to remove the IC now and I'm going to just use a pretty simple way by just flooding the pins with solder. We just put enough solder on all these pins. Be careful, there's a very tiny resistor right there. I've got a dental pick here. I'm just going to put the pick under the end of it and heat up these pins. Once I get them all broke free, it'll actually lift up on one side. And we'll do the same thing over here. And it just comes right off the board. And we're also going to change a little capacitor on this board as well. So I'm going to strip it off the board doing the same technique, just add a bit of solder to the tip, get my pick, place it right next to it, heat up both ends, and as you can see the capacitor just comes right off. So there it is right there, that's a one microfarad capacitor. I'm going to replace this with an actual electrolytic uh, surface mount capacitor. Okay, so I've got the new IC ready to go. I'm just going to position it on the board like this. Just going to tack one corner down like that. Check the alignment on the other side, make sure it's good. We'll tack the opposite corner. So the alignment on both sides looks very good right now. I'm going to take my flux pin and I'm just going to simply Add some flux. This helps the solder flow much more easily. I'm just going to take my finger and press down on it while I heat each pan individually. I'm going to go to the other side, move my hand around here, change the focus of the camera, there we go. That one pin I skipped 
it's just a pad there's not actually a trace there whatsoever so there we go got the new chip on the board everything's great now I'll go ahead and I'm going to uh, change this capacitor I don't think I can show you soldering because it's so small let me get it real quick and I'll show you what it looks like so what I've got here is some uh, one microfarad uh, surface mount capacitors and I'm just going to take one of them out and uh, to get it to fit I'm just going to simply bend the leads so they're straight I'm going to pull the plastic off the bottom of it and um, it, as you can see, the pins line up almost perfectly with the two pads on the circuit board. So I'm going to take my solder, hopefully I can show you this, and I'm going to tin the leads. Put a little solder on the tip, and I'm just going to touch it to the leads. So the leads are accepting the solder now. They're ready to go. Let me move the camera to a different position real quick. Okay, so here's the side view of the circuit board. I've got my capacitor all ready to go right here. Uh, the negative side of the capacitor goes towards the top of the circuit board up here. So I'm just going to stand it up here. There we go. See if I can zoom in on it there. So the leads are all soldered in place. It looks great. And I'm just going to clean it with a little bit of solvent. Well, here's my two circuit boards all finished up and ready to go. And, um, I just want to make a note let you know not to get these um, mixed up because um, one's a 201 MC201 one is MC301 and according to the service manual they have different part numbers so I, I'm sure there's some small component that's just ever so slightly different between them so what I do is I don't know if you can see it on the video or not but I take uh, a little file and I put notches in the top you can see there's two notches on that one and on this one there's three one two three notches so that's how I designate which one's going to be in place of 201 and which one goes as 301 so I thought I'd give you some kind of an idea it's hard to tell by the video about what size these parts actually are but here's how big a dime is in comparison to this circuit board you can see it takes up the majority of the circuit board or at least covers the IC completely so with that you can get some kind of an idea uh, what size these parts are you're dealing with here just that I'd uh, give you that information okay so I've got the power supply back in the set and I'm just doing a test on it now just plug it in we get the two clicks like we should have I'll hit power. It started. You can see the fans are running. The LEDs are on on the SC and the SS board. One more thing I want to talk about. Let me shut this off and pull the plug on it. On um, on these sets, there's a potential of a couple hundred volts present on the SC and the SS boards on these two lines right here they're blue and white leads so what I do is I have this 10 watt resistor that I've got made up into pins it's best just to pull it plug the resistor in there wait about 20 seconds 
And what that's going to do is it's going to discharge these three big capacitors right here on the power supply board. 900 microfarads at 220 volts each. So it's a good idea to make this little uh, bleeder resistor uh, because if you do try to uh, plug one of these connectors on while it's still charged, you'll get quite a spark. You could even do some damage to the boards. I've seen where it's blown uh, the pins completely off. Uh, like blown these pins away, there's so much energy there. All right, so here's our set all put back together, We're ready to go. Yeah, everything's working great. So I hope this saved another TV from the TV junkyard. Thanks for watching.